during part of this exchange, I sort of asked our group gathered here what they thought of what was going on, and the consensus was that there was a lot of skirting of the issues and not a great degree of clarity. New Hampshire, in fact, our hosts here at UNH have all had sacrifices. There was a UNH grad, Ben Keating, uh, who was the head of the College Republicans who gave up his life in Iraq for this mission. And uh, we want to talk now with Mark and Deb Riss. Uh, Mr. Riss is a deputy sheriff here in Stratford County, and their son Dan comes back after his second tour in just two weeks. You've heard a great deal about this. Tell us what it is that you are most interested in. And there's a question, I guess, for Mr. Romney about the timing of all this. Yes, uh, what I'm obviously most interested in is how we can bring in an endgame to the war in Iraq and yet still, still do it so that it's a victory for us and a victory for the people of Iraq. And my question is to uh, Governor Romney, and that is, I've heard the other people up there articulate themselves a little bit better, but in your answer, I didn't hear how you would end it. I didn't, I didn't hear an endgame plan from you, and I would, I would like a response on that. And also along those same lines, sir, uh, a, a comment, I don't... I don't think you fully understand how offended my wife and I were, and probably the rest of the people who have sons, daughters, husbands, and wives serving in the war on terror, to compare your son's attempts to get you elected to my son's service in Iraq. I, I, I know you apologized a couple days later after a firestorm started, but it was wrong, sir, and you, you never should have said it. Well, there is no comparison, of course. Uh, there, there's no question but that the honor that we have for men and women who serve in armed forces is a place of honor we will never forget, and nothing compares to it. People are willing to put their life on the line for American freedom are in a league of their own, and we owe them their res our respect, and, uh, uh, and the sacrifice they make is something we'll never forget. Um, Let's start bringing our troops back when they feel it's the right time to do so, to make sure that we, we move to the support stage out of a posture of strength and not of a, out of a posture of bowing to the Democrats. I don't think you fully understand how offended my wife and I were, and probably the rest of the people who have sons, daughters, husbands, and wives serving in the war on terror, to compare your son's attempts to get you elected to my son's service in Iraq. I, I, I know you apologized a couple days later after... A firestorm started, but it was wrong, sir, and you, you never should have said it. Well, there is no comparison, of course. Uh, there, there's no question but that the honor that we have for men and women who serve in armed forces. So it's like when he said, his five, you know, my five sons, they're not fighting in Iraq. They're fighting to make this country great by riding around in a Winnebago with <laughs> Mitt on the side of it. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> to Mitt Romney. And you want to sit back there and go, uh, this is being televised. <laughs> this is being televised to people who are not necessarily in that room who may think that's kind of offensive. You're an idiot. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. I'm glad Thank you could come set with us. Thank you so much. Personal question here, sir. It's <laughs> tough. My son received a traumatic brain injury, wound in Afghanistan and suffers from severe post-traumatic stress disorder and traumatic brain injury. The government has repeatedly denied services because his wounds aren't visible. He will never be able to return to the regular workforce. This week, President Obama's administration again cut his benefits. Sir, will you look me in the eye and tell me He'll be taken care of. David, my, uh, my heart breaks for you and your family. It's, um, it's just hard to imagine what, what it could be like. I have five boys, as you know. Having one of them injured that way, having, one, uh, having his, lost, his life taken, it just, it's something you can only imagine. You can't, you can't know unless you've really experienced it as you have. And I, and I, I want you to know how much I appreciate your son's sacrifice for our country and I appreciate your sacrifice, your family's sacrifice for our country. To those who put everything on the line, we owe everything they need. And I can tell you if I'm President of the United States, I'll not be raising co-pays on soldiers that are wounded, on men and women who serve this country. And I will do everything in my power to help your son and men and boys and women and girls like him. We, we have such a great debt of gratitude uh, to, these, to these individuals. And I, 
I, I can't tell you enough how much I'm, I'm moved by your experience and, and what debt I believe this country owes to your son and to others like him. Sir, will you look me in the eye and tell me he'll be taken care of? And I can tell you, if I'm president of the United States, I'll not be raising co-pays on soldiers that are wounded. Experiences, I think, I mean, the, the people who really have a life-changing experience uh, in a way that's really incomparable are those that serve in our military. I see some veterans here. I, I, my guess is, what was your experience like? When did you go to the military? Well, I went in the military in 1968. 19, during Vietnam. Tell, tell, what kind of impact did that have on your life? In 1968, an enormous impact. I was a social work officer, and I dare say I saw some casualties uh, in my office. I remember one man, I had to look him in the eye because I couldn't look him in the face. He was so disfigured. I, remembered, uh, I remember a helicopter pilot whose legs, the doctors did everything they could to save in the end he lost his legs. I remember not opening a door for an amputee because they had to learn to do for themselves. It takes a military man to really uh, dislike war. We're not war mongers. Uh, there are those who, like me, got to go serve by church. There are those that go to Peace Corps. There are those that serve in AmeriCorps. Uh, there are various service things that have it, but there's nothing that compares with, with the military and with the experience of our men and women who serve in the military. Well, there is no comparison, of course. Uh, there, there's no question but that the honor that we have for men and women who serve in armed forces is a place of honor we will never forget, and nothing compares to it.